If we are trying to determine if a substitution reaction is SN1 or SN2, the first thing that we should always look at is the structure of the alkyl halide or the substrate. A lot of times we can predict the mechanism just based off of the structure of the substrate. If we cannot, which would be the case for secondary allylic and benzylic alkyl halides, then we want to consider the solvent. If the solvent is polar protic, then it is going to force the SN1 mechanism. If it is polar aprotic, it's going to force the SN2 mechanism. Sometimes people like to be tricky and not tell you what the solvent of a reaction is. In those cases, we need to look at another factor. And the next factor that I want you to consider is the nucleophile of the reaction. The nucleophile is going to either be categorized as strong, strong nucleophile, or it will be categorized as weak. Now, later on, we're going to come back to this strong nucleophile versus weak nucleophile concept. So we're going to get, I'm going to introduce it to you today, and then we will come back to it when we learn another reaction as well and sort of reinforce this. Strong and weak are referring to the reactivity of the nucleophile. So a strong nucleophile is one that is very reactive. And a weak nucleophile is one that is relatively non-reactive. It's still reactive, just not as much as a strong nucleophile. Strong nucleophiles are needed in the SN2 reaction. Remember that the SN2 reaction requires the nucleophile to attack the carbon that has the leaving group so that the carbon can break its bond to the leaving group. So for SN2 to work, we need a very strong and very reactive nucleophile that's just going to jump right in and attack that carbon. The uh, SN1 reaction needs a weak nucleophile. Remember in the SN1 reaction, that reaction starts by the leaving group just spontaneously falling off of the molecule forming a carbocation. So we need some sort of nucleophile that can just kind of sit around and watch that, that um, leaving group fall off without trying to do anything to the molecule. We need it to step back and let the leaving group fall off of the molecule before it decides to actually attack. So that should make sense to you, strong versus weak. Here's a list of strong and weak nucleophiles. Strong nucleophiles are going to be our strong bases, like the hydroxide ion, and then also alkoxide ions, OR-. Those are all very strong nucleophiles. Most of our halogens are also strong nucleophiles. Iodide, bromide, and chloride are strong nucleophiles. Fluoride is actually a weak nucleophile. Cyanide is a strong nucleophile that we see pretty commonly in, in substitution reactions. These are, are really the, the most common strong nucleophiles that we see in our reactions. However, SH- is also a strong uh, nucleophile. We don't see it very often but it is strong. Most of the times that our negatively charged nucleophiles are strong. The, the most common exception is the fluoride ion. That's really the only one that you need to kind of keep in mind. The, uh, sometimes the SN1 reaction uses a neutral molecule as its nucleophile, and when it does, it's typically water or an alcohol, H2O or ROH. And so it makes sense that these are non-reactive. They're not even charged, but they are good nucleophiles. And most of the time, our neutral molecules are going to be uh, S SN1 um, nucleophiles. So I'm going to also add NH3. But occasionally, our neutral molecules are going to be strong nucleophiles. So here are the two exceptions that you want to kind of keep in the back of your head. So again, most of the negatively charged nucleophiles are strong. The exception is the fluoride ion. Most of the neutral molecules are weak. The exception are these weird sulfur compounds. And so if you just sort of kind of generalize this list in your head, if you can generalize the list in your head, 
then that'll help you make the decision by looking at the nucleophile which mechanism will take place.